What's up my precog people? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use the trigonomic identities to simplify or reduce trigonomic expressions and trigonomic functions. Let's dive into exam examples right now. In this first example, we are asked to rewrite the function sine x secant squared of x all divided by cosecant of x so that it only involves tangent of x in no other trig functions. All right, let's use our trig identities to make this happen. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change secant squared. Hmm, what can I change secant squared into? Well, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. That's one of our reciprocal identities. Secant is 1 over cosine, therefore secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. That means, oh, 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 and in the denominator, I'm also going to change cosecant to 1 over sine of x. All right, now I've got to clean this massive gunk up. Well, in the numerator, I can multiply the two together. I get sine of x over cosine squared of x. Multiply, so instead of dividing by 1 over sine, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, sine of x over 1. And now I have my multiply, sine times sine across the numerator is sine squared of x, all divided by cosine squared times 1 is cosine squared of x. And what do you know? That's going to be tangent squared of x. So there I go. I was able to rewrite the function so that it only involves tangent. Tangent squared of x is the same answer. It's just a different representation of this original, quite ugly, trigonomic function. All right, in this problem, we're asked to rewrite the function f of x equals cosecant x times tangent of x so that it involves only secant of x. All right, here I go. I'm going to first rewrite cosecant to 1 over sine of x, that's a reciprocal identity, times, I'm going to rewrite tangent using the quotient identity to sine of x over cosine of x. And pretty quickly I realized that the sine of x's are going to reduce to a 1, so I get 1 over cosine of x, but wait a minute, using my reciprocal identities, 1 over cosine of x is secant of x. So there I was able to completely rewrite or manipulate create a different representation of the function so that it only involves a secant. Basically, I'm simplifying. In this problem, I'm asked to write uh, the function f of x as cosecant x minus sine of x, and I want to rewrite it as a product involving cotangent x and cosecant x. All right, this one's a little bit trickier, so let's take our time with it. Cosecant is 1 over sine of x, using their reciprocal identities, minus sine of x. Now what I'm going to do is it wants me to write this as a product. Currently, it's written as a difference. So what can I do? Well, I guess I can combine these together. So I'm going to treat sine of x over 1 as a fraction. And I'm going to go ahead and bring these two fractions together with subtraction. Now, to, in order to subtract, I do need a common denominator. The easiest way in the world to get a common denominator is to multiply the two we have together. Sine of x times 1 is sine of x. Now, this guy right here already has my common denominator, so that 1 is going to stay in the numerator. But this fraction over here does not have the common denominator, so I'm going to multiply the denominator and the numerator by sine of x to generate the common denominator, and that's going to create a minus sine squared in my numerator. All right, now I'm looking at this and I say, well, I still don't have a product of cotangent and cosine. Well, I also notice right away a Pythagorean identity. Anytime I see a square with the 1 nearby, my eyes are going right to those Pythagorean identities. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared of x, all divided by sine of x. Now, where did I get that from? The Pythagorean identity that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals 1. All I did was subtract the sine squared over, and I get that 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. Now what I'm going to do is something really interesting. I'm actually going to separate that cosine squared to cosine of x times cosine of x. And all divided by sine of x. All right, now right here is a cotangent. Cosine divided by sine is a cotangent of x. And then that remaining cosine of x is still there. So there I go. I was able to rewrite this difference, cosecant minus sine, into a product of cotangent and cosine. Pretty tricky to do, but hopefully you understand how I use those formulas. Or, excuse me, identities. All right, this function says, let's, or this problem says, let the function g be defined as g of x equals tangent of x times secant of x. Rewrite g as a fraction involving powers of sine of x in no other trigonomic functions. All right, so what are we going to do here? Well, let's turn tangent into sine of x over cosine of x. 
let's write secant as 1 over cosine of x. Now when I multiply this, I get sine of x over cosine squared of x. But I want only powers of sine of x. So I could replace that cosine of x squared with, well, using my Pythagorean theorem, I could replace it with a 1 minus sine squared of x. We've actually already seen that already. And there I go. I was able to rewrite this as a fraction involving only powers of sine. Not very pretty, but it does accomplish exactly what the question asks for. All right, this problem says write an equivalent expression for secant theta plus 1 times secant theta minus 1 that only involves powers of tangent. All right, this one I'm going to just incorporate something very simple. I'm just going to multiply. So let's see here, I'm going to have to FOIL, F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, last. So secant times secant is going to be secant squared of theta. Secant times negative 1 is negative secant theta. 1 times secant is 1 times secant, or just a positive secant. And then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So my negative secant and my positive secant are going to cancel each other out, and I just get secant squared of theta minus 1. Now you might recognize that as a manipulation of the Pythagorean identity. Secant squared minus 1 is just tangent squared. Now where did that come from? Well, we know that 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Again, that's one of our Pythagorean identity manipulations. And if I subtract the 1 over, I get secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. All right, this question says write an equivalent expression for cotangent of x times sine of x that involves only cosine of x. Okay, well, here we go. Cotangent of x is cosine of x over sine of x times the sine of x. And oh my gosh, this is pretty easy. The sine of x's are going to reduce to a 1, and I just get cosine of x, exactly what the question did, or was asking me to do. So notice how easy it is to simplify these. All right, let's take a couple more. Simplify the expression sine of x sine 2x minus cosine of x cosine of 2x. Now right away I recognize sine sine cosine cosine with the minus in between. This is reminding me of my cosine addition formula or the sum formula for cosine. Now that formula looks like this. Cosine of alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So that's exactly what I'm seeing here. Hmm, but it's in a little bit of a different order. Hmm, let's see here. How can I manipulate this to make it work so that I could figure it out? Well, all I have to do to the original problem is factor out a negative. So if I factor out a negative from the original problem, I get cosine of x cosine of 2x minus sine of x, sine of 2x. Now it's looking more in the order of the original cosine sum identity. Now again, process what I did there. I took out the negative, which is going to make the sine x, sine 2x negative. So that's why I moved it to the back here. And it's going to make the cosine x, cosine 2x positive, And I moved that to the front. So now I just got to keep that negative sign out in front there, and I'm going to go in reverse. I know that cosine, cosine minus sine, sine is going to be cosine of adding those two angles, x plus 2x. And now, of course, what's x plus 2x? That's going to be 3x. So my final answer, simplified, is negative cosine of 3x. Now, again, really take the time to understand how I did that. I was basically using my formula in reverse. I know that when I have cosine of an angle, cosine of an angle, minus sine of an angle, sine of an angle, what I could do is work backwards and add those two angles together with a cosine. So I took the x plus the 2x to get 3x, and that's how I got negative cosine of 3x. In this final question here, we're asked to use the sum or difference formulas to find the exact value of cosine of pi over 12. Now, we don't recognize pi over 12 from the unit circle like we would with pi over 3 or pi over 6 or pi over 4, so we don't know how to get the exact answer just by looking at the unit circle. But, if we write it as a sum or difference of angles we know, we could utilize our sum or difference formulas. All right, so let's see here. How can I rewrite 1 12th pi or pi over 12? Well, if I do 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12, that would equal pi over 12. 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 1 twelfths. Now, 4 twelfths reduces to pi over 3, and 3 twelfths reduces to pi over 4. 
So basically, I could rewrite cosine of pi over 12 as cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Now, I know pi over 3, and I know pi over 4. That's going to allow me to use the difference formula here. Now, if you don't know the difference formula, look it up, but I have it memorized. It's cosine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4 plus sine of pi over 3 times sine of pi over 4. All right, so now I'm going to utilize my unit circle. And some kids like to draw a quick little unit circle to figure this out. But right here is pi over 3. And at pi over 3, cosine is 1 half. Times, at, cos at pi over 4, cosine is radical 2 over 2. At pi over 3, sine is radical 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. How did I know that? Well, those are values that you should know from the unit circle. Now, we got to multiply first. So 1 half times radical 2 over 2 is radical 2 over 4. And then in the back, we get radical 6 over 4 when we multiply. And now we can add because we have a common denominator. And we get radical 2 plus radical 6 all over 4. There's my exact answer to cosine of pi over 12 using the difference of a cosine formula. All right, that's it for ways that we could utilize the identities to simplify. Obviously, there are many, many, many more problem types, but in this video, I just wanted to demonstrate some different ways that we could use our identities to simplify trigonomic expressions and trigonomic functions.